Welcome back to my channel, part two of my video on premium street and travel photography combos is currently in the making. But in the meanwhile, another very interesting project came to an end. And this is what this video is all about. When last year the M10R hit the market with 40 megapixels of resolution on its newly developed sensor, I posted a video and compared the Leica M10P with the Leica M10R. And it turned out there are not that many distinction factors. The main distinction actually is the resolution 24 megapixels on the M10P versus 40 megapixels on the M10R. Leica has no in body image stabilization in their rangefinder cameras in the M series, but they have it in the Leica SL2 and uh, also in the newly developed Leica SL2S. Leica also incorporated, based on in body image stabilization, the multi shot feature with a firmware update coming to the Leica SL2 and in the Leica SL2S being there from scratch. To make an example, on the Leica SL2S, the multi shot feature for still images without a lot of moving elements enhances the resolution from the native 24 megapixels to 96 megapixels, which is huge. The question subscribers ask me by mail is the following. Can we achieve an uplift of resolution in the same way on a Leica M-series rangefinder camera without in-body image stabilization and without that sensor shift technology. It turns out there is indeed a technique you can use to enhance the native resolution on the Leica M10P, but it's universally applicable to any other camera up to, in my case here, which I'm going to live demonstrate, 90 megapixels with a fantastic image quality. The technique I'm going to experiment with is under the headline of super resolution. And I'm going to cover this in detail in the course of the video, but the idea is very simple. Instead of having your camera on a tripod where it is sturdy, have it handhold, go into continuous shooting, take a lot of shots, stack them together with a procedure I'm going to illustrate and then enjoy a multiple resolution of what your sensor would deliver natively. The way I did this on the Leica M10P was that in drive mode, I switched to continuous high speed shooting. And then by hand holding the camera in continuous high speed shooting, there are these tiny little erratic movements my hands are making when the camera is not on a tripod. And this generated 20 frames, these 20 frames with a procedure I'm describing in detail in the course of the video, I stacked together to one final image and that final image had instead of 24 megapixels, 90 megapixels and a fantastic image quality. And now let's kick off the video and have a look at my super resolution experiment with the Leica M10P. The first remark I want to make is that what I'm going to show as a technique is not my own invention. And I give credit to all people who did this before me. I have three examples here on display. One is from Peter Pixel. One is from F stoppers and the other one is from DP review. And these people have done this before. I will link their tutorials down below in the info box because some of their videos and explanations are much longer. I will follow an accelerated procedure here because I only want to illustrate the concept, but clearly the credit for the technique is due to those people and not to me. The shooting technique is as simple as explained in the intro to this video. One thing to mention, it's easier if you have your arms resting on your body, then the tiny erratic movements will be just right. And now let's look into the process and into the outcome of the super resolution experiment. So I have now imported the sequence of 20 photos coming out from that handhold shooting into Lightroom. And uh, clearly I could do some post-processing now but I wanna actually do it after I stack the images. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to photo and then I go to edit in and I say open as layers in Photoshop. By this procedure, it will open Photoshop and actually have one layer for each individual photo. For this process, we need a little bit of patience. It will take a while to get 20 layers created and import 20 raw files with 24 megapixels. So I'm going to accelerate this now here in the video preview. Zooming into the Photoshop GUI, we actually can see at the layer section of Photoshop how these layers are created and filled with the images. The steps you need to do to stack these 20 images into one super resolution image are pretty straightforward. And uh, the way you do this is we go to image here and then we go to image size. Since we want to have four times the resolution and the square root of four is two, we need basically to double 
the width and the height and make sure you have here not pixel but percentage. So we go here to 200, it will automatically adjust on the height side and then you see also here updating the preview. And then you have one more choice here, resampling. I have chosen this as nearest neighbor as it was recommended by the various tutorials in the web, but probably worthwhile to, you know, experiment with other settings here. We go to OK and then Photoshop generates for me a four times the resolution image than what we had before, which given that we started with 24 megapixels times four will be 96 megapixels. The next step is to auto align the layers. And again, that is pretty straightforward. Just make sure the first layer is selected, then scroll down to the last layer, hold shift and click on the last layer. And then you see they are all selected now. And uh, then we go here to edit and uh, on edit, we go to auto align layer. So Photoshop is doing that job for us. And now at the sub pixel level, bringing these layers in line so that we actually get a stacked image where everything fits together. So let's have a look at that. We get another window here and you can keep everything as it is by default. Auto make sure nothing is uh, checkboxed here, then go to OK. And then a longer process starts, which again will take a while. So we need some patience because it's 20, 24 megapixel raw images, which are aligned at the sub pixel level now by Photoshop. So what we see now here is that we basically have these layers aligned automatically by Photoshop. If you look here, for instance, in the corners and uh, the boundaries, you see actually some empty space here, which comes from that alignment process. So we are going to crop this into, let's say, a complete image later in Lightroom. But the next step in the process is a bit tedious. And what we need to do is if we look at the layers here, we now want to blend these images since they are aligned now so that there is a weighted contribution from every layer. And the way you can do this is by opacity. And uh, I follow the suggestions from other people in the web to do this equally weighted. So basically start with uh, 5% on the first layer. So we go here to 5% and uh, then we continue with 10%. And if you ask yourself, where is that magic 5% coming from? Then it's basically the fraction coming from the number of layers. So one over 20 is 5%. And in this way, by increasing 5% from layer to layer, starting from number one, one over 20 is 5%, number two over 20 is 10%, and so on, we get these layers blended into each other and uh, then get some equally weighted contribution from each layer. So let's quickly do this. This is a bit tedious. So we have here 15%, the next layer gets 20%, and then we have 25% and so on. I'm going to stop here, accelerate this quickly and come back when the manual work is done. So if you now look into the layer section, I've basically done the work. So I have 5%, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 and so on. And if I scroll to the bottom here, we have here 90, 95 and the last one has 100%. And that basically since these are stacked, aligned, and now with equally weighted contribution, this is basically blending these images or these layers, I should say, into each other. And now the last step we do is we just flatten the image to get one super resolution file here. So again, we select the one on the top, we go to the bottom, we keep holding shift, click again, means we have all layers selected now, and then we right click on the selected layers and say flatten image. And uh, then we basically get this all into one super resolution file. And we are basically done. I export this and then I come back when I imported it into Lightroom. I'm here now in Lightroom and on the left hand side, you see the single shot of that scene. And on the right hand side, you see the multi shot image, which came from these 20 frames taken handhold and then stacked together in Photoshop in the procedure we just saw. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to develop the digital negative on the left hand side and then carry over by copy paste the settings to the multi shot. So going into the develop section, I prepared this already. So here we go. Now we have uh, developed the image. And uh, if we go quickly through my adjustments here, this is pretty straightforward. So I decreased the highlights, I increased shadows, I went up in presence, texture, clarity, dehaze, and vibrance and saturation. 
In the regional settings, I also boosted up the shadows and on sharpening, I increased from 40 to 60 and on noise reduction, I'm going for 10. That's basically what we have here. And now let's go back into the library and let's copy paste the settings for development. So I go here, develop settings, copy settings. I take it all. We take it over to the multi-shot image here develop settings, paste settings, and then all the parameters are carried over to the multi-shot image, which was created by stacking these 20 raw images before. So on the left-hand side in the single shot, we have the 24 megapixel. I lost a little bit of resolution because I used the transform function in Lightroom to get the church towers really vertically upright. And the cropped resolution is 5,824 times 3,883 which is a little less than 24 megapixels after post-processing. On the right-hand side, I had to crop in two to get away these boundaries uh, from stacking the images and the cropped resolution is 11,606 times 7,737 and that corresponds to 90 megapixels. So we went up from close to 24 megapixels to 90 megapixels by this super resolution procedure. The last thing I want to do is I want to do a little bit of pixel peeping and going into these images and see now if that super resolution technique really brings some advantage for the image. And for this, on the left hand side, on the single shot, I crop in by 400% and accordingly on the right hand side, on the multi shot, I crop in by 200% and that should bring the comparable image composition into view here. So, and I will also point out right at the beginning, the disadvantage. So if you look for instance here, you see the bird on the wood here in the water. And if you look into the same image in the multi shot, you see here some ghosting. And that's because during these 20 shots, the bird was moving. But that would be exactly the same if I would have an in-camera built-in multi shot function like I have it in the SL2 or the SL2S or in other cameras. And that is something you cannot avoid. In general, multi shot practices independently, whether they are built into the camera body or whether you do it with this technique, which I'm showing here, will provide some ghosting if you have moving elements in the scene. So if you apply multi-shot techniques via stacked images, you want to have a still scene with no moving subjects. And uh, some moving subjects don't really disturb the image. So in that overall image here, that the bird here has some ghosting, is not killing the proposition of that image. And uh, it's also known that if you take longer exposures, because the light is fading out, then you also have the same effect. So that's in this scene, I think not a problem. If you would have a lot of people closer walking up and down the street, then this could actually ruin the image or you decide to live with the ghosting effect. Let's now look at some still parts of the image. So let's for instance, look into that window here. Let's also zoom this up here. And then you see the difference and you see two things here. First of all, the multi shot on the right hand side is significantly sharper and has better details. Let's move this up a little bit. Significantly better. And the second effect you get from stacking these 20 images is you get automatically noise reduction. And uh, the image on the left hand side in the single shot, sorry, I just beamed it away, has much more noise and grain if you zoom in to 400% than what you have here on the right hand side when you look at the multi shot. Let's look into some other areas of the image. Let's for instance, uh, look here at the wall of this building here. And let's bring this side by side. Again, if you compare these images, absolutely amazing. You see every tiny little detail much better on the multi shot image than what you have on the single shot image. And also the noise level is much better on the right hand side. The right hand side image is clean, has no grain, but has more details and is in general sharper than what we have on the single shot. Let's look into a few other areas, maybe here in the corners. Let's see what we have here. Let's do the same on the multi shot. Let's bring this side by side. So here I think now we have the comparable image section. And again, if you look here into the walls of these buildings, absolutely fantastic what the multi shot option done handhold not by an in-camera built-in algorithm has produced here. So also here the bricks on the walls, if you look at that, and again, if you compare the noise and the grain, 
absolutely a worthwhile to consider technique we have seen here. Then of course on the boats here, let's go here on that little part here. We again will see some artifacts coming from the fact that this boat is moving in the water and that creates some fuzziness here on the boat. But if you look at that element here, it's again much better on the right hand side in the multi shot than it is on the single shot. So I could continue for a while and uh, you will see the same effect on the trees. So if you look at the trees here, let's do this. I guess this tree was moving a little bit. So probably is a little bit fuzzy. No, it's not actually. So there seems not have to be a lot of wind. But if you go here to the sky, let's go to the sky here. You again see how much cleaner the multi-shot image is when it comes to noise and grain and uh, what you get if you zoom in deeply on the left hand side on the single shot. The last two crops I want to show are related to that bridge here. So let's zoom into the bridge here on the left hand side single shot. Let's do the same on the right hand side. And again, if you look here, there is this ghosting effect from the tiny little people. Take note that we are here at a 400% crop. So as I said, in that type of scene, that little bit of fuzziness coming from ghosting from moving elements or people in this case is not ruining the image. And you see again on the structure of the bridge, how much detail and clarity you get on the right hand side in a multi shot compared to the single shot. And uh, here clearly you can recognize the people. Here you have some ghosting. But in general, if you see how deeply into the image I crop, then this is not a problem. And the last example is here again on the bridge. If you look at that structure of the bricks here and we do the same on the right hand side on the multi shot, I think you clearly see how much better the structure is replicated, how much sharpness and clarity and details you get in the multi shot. Concluding on the video, my super resolution experiment was a full success and I know now even if I have a lower resolution sensor, if I go for this technique here and the scene I'm going to take photos of has not too many moving elements, you can actually with any camera lift up the resolution to about four times of what the sensor is delivering natively. If you liked that video and I hope it was helpful, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel. There's always more to come every week. Thanks for watching and peace out.